Okay, hello and welcome to another episode of Earthworks Hub. I'm your host Ivan Olovic, and with me today I have Jim from JR Safety. That's right. Yeah, thanks very much for having us on board here, Ivan. Appreciate yeah. the opportunity to have a chat with you. No worries. Thank you. So I think our main topic today will be about risk assessments, and I know uh, a lot of guys in our industry uh, get the risk assessment just because they think it's just what they need, but I don't know if they actually understand what it, what it is and why we actually do it. So it's probably good to go through all that. And then we can um, talk about your company and, and what services that you offer as well. Yeah, sure. Yep. No oh, worries right. at all. Like I was saying a bit earlier, a lot of guys probably don't understand why we do risk assessments and that. Can you give us, you know, a bit of an idea of why we actually have to do it and, you know, the benefits of doing it? Yeah, sure. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's the, I mean, the, probably the understanding of a, a risk assessment is the most important part of it rather than just, uh, there's a lot there, it's just ticking that box to help get their machine on site. <laughs> yeah. But um, basically, the risk assessment is that it will highlight any risks and hazards associated with the actual machine. And then when you're conducting it, you'll be checking for things like leaks or um, make sure guards are in place, making sure certain, it like, might be the rot structure, um, roller protection structure is, you know, compliant to Australian standards. There's there's obviously a, a safety standard for machinery, making sure that the machine complies with that. And then the, basically it's highlighting to the operator as well at a, at a high level where the, um, where the risks and hazards are with the machine. So it doesn't negate the need still to do your swims and JSAs, which is um, would still need to be carried out for, for each and every particular task and so on. But um, it's at a high level highlighting what is required for that the risks and hazards and associated with that machine. Mm, all right. Does that, so does that make does that make sense? Yeah, Sorry, yeah. So jumbled I, whack. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I understand that. So I suppose it's just all about um, minimising or eliminating the risks that you that you identify, you know, when you assess the, the machine. Yeah, correct. So you always obviously follow the hierarchy of control. Obviously, eliminations at the at the top of the list there to try and eliminate it if you can. But if there's ways you can reduce that that risk and hazard to the personnel in the, the day that's trying to make make it as safe an environment as possible for the operator and those around you yeah that's true yeah so so how often do you have to do these uh, risk assessments uh, the, the risk assessment um needs to be done when obviously in sale of a machine do you, that that's a mandatory requirement but as far as renewing it, it's recommended to be rec to reviewed every 12 months um that is not mandatory um, in saying that, a lot of sites won't, won't allow it if you haven't had it reviewed in that, that every 12 months. So they'll, they'll want you to, to review it. And the other thing is if something then obviously happens with the machine, you know, whether you've tipped it on its side or um, you've modified it, maybe put a new hitch on, the, on an excavator, um, that's where you'd need to conduct a, another risk assessment on it to obviously ensure that it, everything is complete compatible and, and complies. So, um, so yeah, if you, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and, and how you got into the industry? Yeah, so I started the business basically at the start of COVID. Um, my father was originally a plumber in irrigation um, and then uh, the other side of my family were landscapers and they moved into um dry hire and machinery now. But um basically yeah, I saw there was a bit of a, a need in the industry to um number one for doing a third party risk assessment on machinery for, you know, when you've had a modification or even just renewing a risk assessment. But also um with safety coming a priority across number of well pretty much all sites, construction sites now, um, and any, every procedure improving, each builder working to um, 
basically be at the forefront with their safety practices. Um, yeah, we basically saw there was a need there and that's how we, I, I've obviously done a cert four in OHS and a um, number of other safety courses. So yeah, we, and with the experience with machinery, dabbling the machinery from early childhood, well, um, I always wanted to get back and back and play on a digger again. And uh, figured that as you get older, that's not always can keep doing that. So yeah, that's how we pretty much saw the, the need for in the safety side of things and yeah, jumped in. And what about um, employees and, and stuff like, have you got some guys working for you or? Yeah, so we've got a, um, another plant inspector who's a mechanic that works for us. And then we've got a graphic designer who runs a lot of our printing and and then a, an admin person as well. Um, and then obviously myself. We, yeah, so we're a fairly small, nimble team, but um, continue, continuing to look, look to grow with adding additional things that we can pretty much help the civil contractor or um, hire companies in their safety practices pretty much and help them getting on getting onto site, making sure they're working in a safe and manner. And then obviously at the end of the day, everyone's goal to go home safely. So what sort of machinery or equipment do you mainly sort of uh, find yourself working on? Yeah, so the, mainly we focus on obviously civil construction. So it's earth and earth moving, so mobile plant, whether it be escalators, graders, skid steers, loaders, etc. Um, but basically mobile plant and for the civil construction industry is where we concentrate on. And what are your sort of your typical clients? You know, are they like smaller sort of owned operators or big large sort of companies? Uh, a bit of a bit of a mix on that. There's um, so the we got yeah small owner operator civil contractors that might be um, in the main that's when they're going transitioning from maybe doing residential work um, to getting into commercial, and then. We do a lot for hire companies um, and then OEMs as well. So a lot of Clark equipment and that kind of thing, um, bringing in equipment into Australia. So before they go out to their customers, we conduct the risk assessments of a third party for them. If I want to get a risk assessment done, what's the actual process for that? Yeah, no worries. So if you um, have a machine and wanted to get your a risk assessment done. The general process would be either to just give us a call um, or you can do a an inquiry through the website, send us an email, whatever you know makes it easy. You can do it through social media. Doesn't, doesn't worry us. We'll respond to it um, promptly and basically we will arrange a time with you to come out and we need approximately a, a machine for about an Oh, depending on the size of the machine, but anywhere between sort of 45 minutes to an hour or so. And, um, yeah, that's basically it. We, we will, from that point, guide you as far if there's anything that needs to be done to the machine. If there's something that we can fix for you at the time, we will also offer that. Um, and if it's something that's a bit for more than what we can assist with, we'll, we'll obviously work with you to, to get that rectified as well. All right. And then, so what do you do? Do you just like um, send out the risk assessment later or something or do we give it to no, the No, so at, at the time, um, we will place a QR code on the actual machine, um, which will give you, anyone can download the a copy of the risk assessment at any time. You just got to enter the serial number of that particular machine. Um, we also print a hard copy of the risk assessment out on the spot. Um, and give that to you, not just um, email. I mean, we do email it as well after at that, at that time as well. But the reason we don't just email it is because a lot of sites will still want you to have the actual physical hard copy of the risk assessment with you um, with the machine. And they'll want the operator to sign on. There's a sign on page at the back of the risk assessment saying that they have read and acknowledged the risk assessment. 
Yeah, I notice a lot of sites will ask me for a copy of it and I'll go and photocopy it and then come back. I've had um, sites that wouldn't let me on because my risk assessment was out of date. So I had to had to like wait until an assessor came out and um, quickly did an uh, on-site assessment for me. So yeah, they're yeah. pretty strict some sites, yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, that that's yeah. we do find that a lot with the, you know, with contractors that are, are just getting into the commercial, um, I guess, civil construction, where they haven't probably, other than probably the risk assessment they've got from when they bought the machine, they haven't um, ever been asked for it, obviously doing residential work, but as soon as you start going for any accreditations, like, your ISO or AS 4501, that, that will be where they'll request um, and obviously commercial sites will request the risk assessment and it obviously to being up to date. Yeah, yeah. All right, so you say um, you do on site, I suppose, yeah, you don't have to actually bring your machine in anywhere. You were saying earlier you actually come out? No, no, so we do, we do, we offer both. So we'll, we obviously got vehicles fully kitted up to come out to site, but um, we also do get it where some people will drop their machine or truck um, at our premises here in Knoxfield and and we'll, um, we can do it on the spot here. That sometimes, some of those situations are where we might be also putting in some other control measures like lockable isolators or emergency e-stops um, for the machine. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you were saying earlier you do offer more than just just uh, risk assessments. So you can do other stuff as well. Yeah. Correct. So the obviously the risk assessment is only one part of part of the process. These there's certain controls that some sites will we obviously site specific, but they will require to be on your machine. Things like a red lockable isolator. Um, might you might have an isolator, but they want it to be lockable so it can be locked out. There might be things like emergency stop buttons to be fitted on the machine so that you can be accessed from the ground and you can hit the emergency stop button and as well as one in the cabin. Um, there might be things like fire extinguishers to be fitted to the um, machine. Typically, they'll always come with one, at least one, but some sites will re require an external fire extinguisher. Maybe it normally will be a, a little bit larger depending on the size, that always depends on the size of the machine. Um, even reversing cameras. So we, we do all that in-house and we stock them here in Knoxville. All right. And what about like stickers and that? Like I've, I've seen sometimes it says, you know, beware crushing point and this and that. Do you do those things as well? Yeah, correct. So we've got our own printing machine. Um, so And we also carry all those stickers in our vehicles. Um, so we... You can jump online. We've actually got an online store as well for as far as safety decals and unit numbers, logos, etc. So we can do that all in house with our absolutely that's why our graphic designer mainly looks after. Um, but we also so if we when we're doing a risk assessment, typically if we find that some of those stickers are rubbed off or worn off, disappeared, we will offer to replace them on the spot. It saves the contractor going and chase them down, trying to find the, the stickers. Then he's got to go back out and fit them to his machine. It's just basically trying to make it as easy as possible for the contractor. So we do also carry in our vehicles things like fire extinguishers. We are certified to tag the fire extinguishers for them. We carry pre-start books. Another thing, common thing that will be asked for, is have you done your pre-start on your machine? And the builders will ask for a copy of it. Um, you know, document satchels, just simple little things to keep everything neat and tidy. Um, yeah, we, we carry that all all within our vehicles as well as what we stock here. Um, and what about, like, do you remind people that their assessment is due? Because I know that um, I usually have, like, a little sticker of mine and sometimes I forget to, to look at it. Have you got, like, another process or do you do the same sort of thing? Um, yeah, so obviously that QR code, sticker we put on the machine, every machine we do, we'll have the date that the risk assessment was conducted along with the report number. Um, but once you, we have done a risk assessment for anyone that goes into our system, you will get a reminder 11 months from the date that the risk assessment was done, letting you know that it's coming up 
to be renewed. Um, and then you'll get another further reminder um, a couple of weeks before. Normally, normally this, this is an email reminder. Um, and then as it's come pretty close to due or overdue, we'll, we'll give you a call just to just to make sure you're aware that it is due. And if you want to book it in, we'll, we'll obviously arrange then to book it in to get it renewed for you. Yeah. No, that's good because I know I, I often um, don't realise I need one until it's after the date, you know, when someone's asked me for it. No, that's exactly right. We, we we get that get that a bit where you know someone was saying oh, we got a risk assessment done, you know, a couple of years ago, but I've totally forgotten about it. And basically, we try to make it a little bit uh, foolproof in the sense that you get that reminder so that you don't come unstuck and turn up on site the second time with forgetting that it's gone overdue. Um, it is a a bit of a common common problem. And the other the other thing we do come up is that some will obviously um, push it out as long as possible before they actually do get it renewed. Um, but obviously we, we try to respond to these sorts of inquiries as quick as possible, but if you, we are a bit more proactive rather than reactive, it makes it easier for us and obviously easier in, in, in um, for the actual contractor. Yeah, true, true. Um, what are some of the challenges that you face uh, in with what you're doing? Probably some of the things we, I guess, yeah, some of the challenges we face is that there will be varying requirements across different sites. Um, but what we try to do is alert the contractor as to different needs and find out a little bit more about what work they're doing and then be um, almost a give them the heads up if like they're going on to a for example a tier one project for the government what some of the requirements they'll need to add on to their machine um, rather than obviously getting a risk assessment then going there and finding that hey, this site requires you to add this this and this to it we try to give you the heads up at the time ahead of the time so that um, you're not caught out basically when people will modify a machine, a very common one is that, uh, for example, they might change the hitch over to a quick hitch um, or a, a tilt. Um, basically, it won't align with the load chart inside the actual excavator. So the load chart might say tell you the safe working load and the dynamic load, but it actually doesn't have any references to the hitch. And some of the sites will pick you on that and won't let you use it for any lifting or et cetera. So um, we also offer that service in-house so we can do a new load chart for the machine, which will cover obviously the current pitch and serial numbers and et cetera on it. But, um, I suppose I didn't even think of that. Yeah, I suppose every time you make an adjustment, you're changing the workload. So yeah, it makes sense. The other, the other thing to, to, to note is that um, probably what we touched on earlier about being proactive on renewing your risk assessment. It's the same with your servicing of the actual machine. Um, they'll ask, typically a site, these commercial sites will ask for you for the last maybe one or two service documents and showing that you know, you're obviously maintaining your machine and your current is currently up to date with its services. It's the same thing really. It's making sure everything is maintained so that you don't end of the day get get to site and then you get, get held up because there's certain things that haven't been done. Um, what's one of the things that you, I suppose, like about your job and what you do? I guess what we, what we uh, enjoy most is being out and about with machinery, personally. That's, I, I love being around the machinery. But um, the other thing is, you're helping really at the end of the day, helping people go home safely at the end of the day, you know, finish, finish work, um, their machines in good working order, everyone around them is safe. How do you see the, the future of um, Earthworks going with, with, in, you know, with regards to with what you do? Yeah, so with, with the, I guess the future for I think for risk assessments and the safety practices only is obviously on an increase. Everyone is um, typically looking to 
ways to always make things safer. And while probably in the past risk assessments have been, I guess, to a, not, not neglected wouldn't be the right word, but not a high priority. Um, and it's the attitude of just we get in and get the job done and get out. Um, and the quicker we do that, the better. Uh, rather than thinking, well, you know, if something does happen, well, then actually it's going to be a far bigger cost than just taking a step back and taking the, the safe safe away. Um, yeah. So I believe the future for safety is on the increase. A, a role really what we got to play is that we've got to try and make it easy for the civil contractor to understand and also to carry out these procedures so that it's not basically too encumbersome to, for them to take control of and become a, a too big a thing that they'll just brush it aside. Um, so you guys are, obviously I forgot to say earlier, you're in Victoria. Um, do you just service just Victoria or do you go in like national or anything? Uh, we do have a couple of clients we do um, interstate. Um, but in the main, we concentrate on Victoria. We do the future plans for the businesses to set up a branch in, in New South Wales. Um, but with with Victoria, we travel wherever the need is. There's some customers we travel all over the, um, the state based on wherever their machines might be located. Um, but, yeah, the I guess, yeah, our main... For the risk assessments, part of it is we concentrate on Victoria with um, yeah, the future plan to, to expand into the other states. Hmm. All right, cool. And for any listeners that want to get in touch, um, what's what's some of the ways they can get in touch with you guys? Yeah, so the, the best way to get in touch is either simply just give us a call. And I know a lot of... People just still like to use the phone call, which is always great to hear a voice on the other end. Um, otherwise, you feel free to reach out through the website, um, send us an email. We obviously got our socials, Instagram and LinkedIn and Facebook. You can send us a virus a message through on that, which is obviously just search up JR Safety Co. And yeah, we'll be very glad to hear from you, and we'll be glad to, to assist in which way we can with your safety needs. We've got the, the online store, which has got all your safety products, whether it's, you know, reflective tape, your safety stickers, sticker kits, your fire extinguishers, wheel shocks, wheel nut indicators, first aid kits, etc. cetera. Um, they all stocked here, but we can ship Australia-wide, so it doesn't matter where you are, we'll, we'll get it to you. Um, feel free to jump on the online store and check that out. Uh, one of the things is that you get is that some of these guys go, well, where do I get some of this stuff from? And then they've got to try and find an auto elect to supply some some of the things. I find a sticker place to find get the stickers. They've got to go somewhere else to get a fire extinguisher, somewhere else to get a wheel nut indicators or something, somewhere else to get a first aid kit if they can get it all from the, the one place yeah. that makes it easier for them. So. Yeah, it's good that you provide that that service, then, you know, because it's true. Yeah, some I've had in the past where they told me my extinguisher's out of date. And I'm trying to find out where do I get my extinguisher done? Where do I do this? And then, like you say, yeah, if you do it all, it, yeah, it's a no, no brainer. Yeah, oh, I, that was it's probably an, really another point, but it's what we what we do do for um, a number of contractors is that we save them really from getting a number of co contractors out to work on their machine, for an example, might be they've got a generator, they need a risk assessment on it, but they also need the fire extinguisher tagged, but they also need the RCDs to be inspected and tagged, and then they also need, you know, a pre-start book placed with it, they need a, the risk assessment, need the manual, all those items we can sort, sort it all out for them at the time on the spot. Even if it's missing the the manual, we can print it out for them and find it and put it in the, with the machine. Yeah, that's good, very good. So yeah. the, the the thing is to if it in the one sense it saves them 
you know, three or four different call out fees of different contractors to service just one piece of equipment. Yeah. No, that's fair enough. Yeah, that's good. Because like you were saying before, downtime, if they can't start work until it's done, then they're, they're sitting there not getting paid. So might as well yeah, get it all yeah. done with the one, one, one person. Excellent. Well, thanks for, thanks for coming on, Jim. No, I appreciate it, Ivan. No, thanks very much for having us. And uh, we uh, look forward to making the, the civil construction industry a, a safer community and also making it a, a easier for the civil contra- contractor to get on site and get their job done in a safe and um, efficient manner. Um, so, yeah, hopefully all the listeners here now, you've, you've learned a bit more about risk assessments, um, why we do them, how often we have to do them. Um, you've got an option now that if you need to get one done, come down, just give the uh, guys at JR Safety a call. Um, and, yeah, uh, just ensure that your machines are operating safely. Uh, these sites are getting a lot stricter with these um, risk assessments, so just make sure that your, your one is up to date. Uh, Thanks for listening, guys. We'll see you on the next one.